Okay, so this exercise is exercise 5A, which has you designing a, a database for a school. And before you start this, you should watch the video I did on called the Lab 5A ER Matrix Explanation. And that uh, will help you understand what we're doing here. I do provide a bit of a summary of what I did for continuity purposes, but uh, uh, I, you should look it over so you understand the why behind what we're doing. I'm going to start by opening up a crow's foot notation Visio because that's what I'm in right now is Visio 2013 and I'm going to paste in here um, the Excel spreadsheet I did in my previous video that shows you the um, it shows you what the ER matrix looks like um, and you don't have to do an ER matrix every time I mean you just need to think through um, exactly kind of what the business rules are so you know what the relationships are between the tables and um, I'm trying to use the cropping tool here so that you can see this bigger and I'm gonna go here as well and there's the other corner and then this thing up one Okay, I'm only going to keep this up as much as I have room for it as they start filling this up. I'm also going to go to uh, to the design window here, and I'm going to change this to landscape. Okay, and then make this bigger. In the lab 5A ER explanation, I had um, created this ER matrix which shows the relationships between the various entities that we are going to model in this situation. And you can see some of these don't have a relationship, and I explained why in the other video. This is, means it's a mandatory relationship, so I put it in one, yeah, the, red, the one in red. And um, the, these are the relationships you need to model, and the reasons for them, again, are in the other video. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here in page one, and then I'm going to add page two uh, so that we can flip back to the ER matrix when we need it. Okay, so here we have the ER matrix. Let's get started. Um, what I like to do is I like to put the entity that seems to be most prominent in the in the uh, situation you're modeling in the center. And if you look at it, the class is there, is associated with almost every entity that we have of the five entities. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to put the class, start with the class in the middle of my diagram here on page two. So I'm going to grab an entity and I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to put uh, this entity would be called class and of course it will have a class ID as its primary key. Okay, This class will have a, a day it's offered and a time. We could put more in here like the session it's offered and otherwise but I don't see that as a requirement of this lab. Let's put it in anyway if you don't have to if you don't want to but it makes sense doesn't it? So I'm going to put another attribute in here and I'm going to call this the session that it's offered in, the day it's offered and the time that it's offered as well. Okay so that's one. Now Let's go back to the ER matrix. Right here, we have this class generated. The first one is the class student relationship, which is many to many. Each student can enroll in many classes, and each class will have many students in it. So, because it's a many to many relationship, that means that I need to um, have a junction table to put these two together. So, I'm going to have a student table, and there's going to be a student ID. And there's going to be a student last name and a student first name. I'm not going to put all of the non-key columns in here, but some of these I'll put in just for clarity. So now we have those two tables, and they're in a many-to-many -many relationship. And you don't join up class to student. If there's a many-to-many -many relationship, then you have to have a junction table in here. And... Uh, and you would have to go student class 
and because it's a junction table it fathers it follows that same formulaic pattern that um, that I told you in other labs where basically the primary key is the same as the primary keys of the two tables that you're planning to join class ID and student ID together they form a concatenated key so I'm going to set that as a primary key they're a concatenated key so if this was class 10 student 5 the key would be 105 10 5 or 105 now the individually they're foreign keys because they point to the um, they point to the other tables right this class ID points to this tables and all that information and this student talks um, points to this so what I do is I grab a relationship line like this and I'm going to straighten it out which makes things easier and the many goes on this side of the table this side and then the one goes over here and I probably can move it around okay yep one thing I would appreciate it you would do because I'm finding it really hard to grade your work and that is when you put a relationship line on here if you wouldn't mind going to the trouble I would consider it very considerate if you formatted the shape if it allows and go to the line here and go to uh, width and make it pretty big oops nothing was selected maybe that's why there we go. See how I can see that now? Just so, so I don't keep you bothered with this throughout the whole exercise. I'm not going to do it here, but every time you put a relationship in, I would really, really appreciate it if you would make the width a lot bigger so it's very clear uh, what what you joined and what, and what type of relationship. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to do this again. I'm going to see if I can take this and copy it. I'm going to paste it down here. And uh, I know I have to do this again. And the one side, and this is a rule, the one always goes to the, you know, the far entity, and the many always goes to the entity that contains the, uh, that is the junction table. And it's always, 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 always that way. So, um, you know, this, that's one thing I want you to to constantly look for. Okay, so. Um, and this shows that each student is associated with zero or many classes, and each class is associated with zero or many student classes. Okay, that means that that zero means it's a minimum cardinality, which is optional. Um, so, but because it's a junction table, this thing can't exist without these other two tables over here, the class and the student. So that's why there is a mandatory relationship there, even though it isn't in our ER matrix. Mandatory meaning the the inner hash mark there the inner up and you know vertical line is a one okay so that's the first one in the er matrix dealt with check that one right there it's done many to many now what we have to do is we have to work on the course class relationship so i'm going to go here and i'm going to create a a uh, class right here And I'm going to, no, we already have class, sorry. So I'm going to make this course. And I'm going to make the, we have a course ID. And we said that each course can be associated with uh, many classes, but each class associates with only one course. So um, I think it's going to make more sense for me to take this. Uh, ooh, that's the wrong one take this class right here and put it down here so that everybody can eh, everybody can use it all the different tables will create so um, now we have to join the course and the class together another thing would help too for me when you submit your work is if you can make it so I can see the whole see the whole diagram Okay, so now we have to join course and class, and we said in the ER matrix that each course associates with many class, but each class associates with only one course, and there must be a minimum of one course that it associates with. 
So what I would do here is each course associates with many classes. So I'm going to grab another relationship line. I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to put the many side here. And I'm going to put the one side here. And of course, the rule I keep telling you, if you're thinking of getting a tattoo, a good one, a good tattoo would be the foreign key goes on the many side of the relationship. So I'm going to grab this attribute right here. I'm going to put it up here so I can see it better. And I'm going to go course ID. And we're going to set that as a foreign key. And that has now dealt with this relationship where each class is associated with a minimum of one course. You can't what well, you're gonna you can't offer a course, a class, and say what what course is it? Uh, we don't know yet. That doesn't make sense. It will always be associated with the course. So um, now you have that one dealt with. And then the next one is instructor class. So with that one we need to do another relationship with instructors associated with a class. So I'm going to grab the another entity and I'm going to put instructor and I'm going to put instructor ID right there. And of course you'd have a last name and a first name but I'm not going to bore you with that because that's easy. And then I'm going to grab another relationship line and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to go down here like that. And we need to put the foreign key in the class table because each instructor can teach many classes, but a class only has one instructor at this particular university. So I'm going to have to put another attribute in here. And this will say instructor ID. And of course, it will be a foreign key. And of course, I said the foreign key goes on the many side of the relationship. So it means this many sign will go, will attach to this particular table. And the one side will attach to this table. So now we have successfully dealt with this relationship. And I want to point out it's mandatory, right? There's got to be a, you can't uh, have a, oh, did I say it was mandatory or no? Let's go back. Okay, this was not mandatory. So because it's not mandatory, then that means we need to alter the uh, this. It's, it's what it means is that you can have a class on paper, but not have an instructor assigned. You the system won't. You don't want the system to force somebody to, um, um, uh, you know, to put an instructor in when you don't have one yet. So I would be inclined to, um, you have to change this point here. Now the question is whether that's an endpoint or whether it's a, a uh, beginning point. Let me check. We'll figure it out as we go. Set, let's assume it's an endpoint. Zero or one. Yes, that was it. That means you have zero or one. That's the way I would do it so that the People that use the database aren't frustrated when they've entered classes and they're still looking for professors. Okay, so we've dealt with that relationship, and now we want to go back to to uh, the room relationship. Now, each each room has can associate with many classes, but the way we do things at our university is each class is only in one room. So on that one. I am going to uh, go back to our diagram and now we need a room table. So I'm going to grab an entity here. I'm going to call it room. And I'm going to go room ID. And that will then give me the, um, the room. And then I'm going to take another relationship and I might as well copy this one. Okay, each class is associated with one room. So I'm going to go like that. And each 
room can be associated with many different classes. And uh, we're going to make it so that each of these have optional minimum, um, optional minimum cardinalities, they're called. So each room can be associated with zero or many classes. And each class can be associated with zero or one room at a maximum. OK, so let's go back to the ER diagram. Now I see that we've covered most of this. We've covered all of these relationships. This required a junction table. These were one-to-many relationships. This was mandatory. These were optional. And so let's go and look here again and see how this looks. And I'd appreciate it again if you would uh, make it so that I can make these relationships as big as you can so I can see it all at once. There's a lot of you. And it's, sometimes it's hard for me to see what you did. Don't cram them together like this so I can't see what's going on. That's happened a few times. Make sure they're far enough apart. Make these relationship um, lines really, really big so that I can see what you did. See, I can see that pretty well. It may do that for all of them. And that would be how you do Lab 5A. Good luck.